Good evening, everyone. System Chalk here with the 197th episode of our first run through Book of Hours playing as the artist. Um, now, we uh, wound up with a little bit of luck in terms of how uh, yesterday worked out. We were able to level up another skill in the case, uh, in this case, Putrefactions and Calcinations, Death Alters, Snow Endures, Solomon Husher. So uh, our focus is still going to be on reading and exploring the house, um, but of course that's weighted against our hope to get certain things from the beach. So I'm going to do some beach combing first. Uh, I'll also make some money, but the making the money is really just a way for me to get elements of the uh, soul back. And then on top of that, I will... Uh, I'll read and then I'll get elements. Oh, sorry, I'll um, I'll explore different pieces of art. So we did say that we we're going to be going left to right in uh, left to right, top to bottom, and so that means we go. We should put the green and the white tablet together. Traveling at night, volume one, and then we've got the witch and sister. So again, I'm not married to this approach. If something happens to make me think that there might be a better approach in terms of, um, you know, in terms of just getting getting more out of my my day, if I think that I'm going to be able to make a little bit more progress, uh, I will change things around. One thing that I might do sort of longer term is I might be willing to take steps to bring Numa a bit faster. I'd rather not take that approach. It's something I did in a previous run, and I, I feel that that's not as satisfying. Um, because the other thing is, is that based on this playthrough, I may actually wind up giving a little bit of feedback. Um, because if I recall correctly, obviously it's been a few episodes now, but I, I think in the case of Hyksos, it wasn't a question of me wanting to fulfill that guest's particular wish. I believe in that particular case, I could not afford to hire them. And so in this case here, I've uh, only been able to find certain um, certain books. And uh, I'll maybe just admit here, this, this would be a, a revelation for later, but this actually contains a, a Newman which is related to the uh, the artist. That is one of the the specifics I know. It's actually possibly the only Newman I know that's specifically related to the artist. Uh, I could be wrong. I'll, I'll obviously double check the text there. But uh, in this in this particular case, um, it is rather inconvenient that I wound up with uh, without Hyksos. Now, there is another perfectly reasonable argument which says, well, that's really just expressing a preference for you, you know, the player. You know, if you want, you can explore any number of end. So, you know, number one, I've always been able to go for the uh, the ending in St. Brian's Field. Um, and if I want to go for a specific, you know, if I want to go for a specific uh, ending, you know, that involves committing a history, well, there's nothing stopping me from doing that. All that I'm really stopped from doing is uh, maybe one that's specifically related to an individual Newman that I'm looking for. And in this case, it would be one that uh, is specifically tied to the to the artist. Now, I can see why someone would want to do that. And I think it would be nice to be able to do that. But I also think there's a very reasonable uh, you know, claim on the part of the game developer, which is, well, you know, you can't you know, like, how easy do you want this to be, right? Do you want there to be no mystery in the game? Do you want to, do you really want to make it so that you, you know, you're able to snap your fingers and be able to find and read whatever book you want? And I think there is something to be said for the fact that, you know, there is some exploration involved. And I was talking the other day about how I, um, I do like the fact that there's still a few mysteries for me to engage with inside of Hush House, but my own feeling is I, I think languages are a little bit of a harder, um, a harder block for some of the themed endings, and I, I wonder if maybe there's another way that we might be able to, um, to get languages for certain characters. Anyway. Uh, the Witch and Sister. The Witch and Sister unites what is at rest. She is sought at the winter's edge and beneath the moon. She cannot be separated. She cannot be touched. She is coral, amber, pearl. Abbot Jeffrey recorded a prophetic dream. Two women, one in violet, one in white, gathering seashells. 
Each gave him a shell, but each gave him different advice. The Thunderskin. As I used to say in my youth, the day is done and so am I, but I've earned my pay. Tuppence will buy me a hearty meal in a quiet place where I can rest and gather my thoughts. It is autumn when the leaves rustle. The silent landlady has served me apple pie with steamed cream in the window nook. Now it did occur to me that I've got a whist sitting here and I could in fact um, be restoring this in bed already. So a bit of a blunder on my part, but... Traveling at Night, Volume 1, The Annotated Dream Journals of Christopher Olopoli, sometimes called the only readable occultist. Literate, entertaining, bewildering. The wood lies outside the walls of the Mansus. As any student of the histories knows, the Mansus has no walls. Olopoli describes how he came to make repeated visits to a dream wood via what he calls silver dreams. Trying to think your way to the wood, he explains, is like thinking your way to being in love, but I did find a secret that helped. To get an impulse for that. All right, so I got a couple things that I want to do. First of all, uh, I should have restored an element of the soul. I'll do that right now. A quick nap in a warm bed with something comforting to drink while the winds chase the clouds and the clouds chase the sun. We will also pour ourselves another glass of water. We'll read another book. And we'll look at another piece of art. The Thunderskin. He ca sorry, he cannot be stilled. He demands the dance. He is beaten like a drum. He is heard in the wood below the world. A story is told of Hendrick, first baron to Wolf, and a local cunning man, one Red William, who placed a curse on the DeWolfs. There will be no seventh of their line. There is another story that it was no curse but a prophecy, and that Hendrick did not execute William, but kept him safe in the caves below the isle. So I believe we read that once before, and of course we've already pointed out um, the uh, the room here. Oops, sorry, this one. But uh, it's another, again, another fine example of how you can read something early in the game, right? So if you're someone who obsessively checks every single room, it's very unlikely that you're going to encounter the Red William, uh, the Red William room until much later. Um, which again in some ways it can give you a reason to there's a few different ways that you can interact with the game uh in that regard you can take notes which is definitely something that i've done i've taken both physical and digital notes you can kind of just try and keep it all in your head uh you can you know a little bit like me go back through the game and see you know see if there's anything anything new or anything extra that you can get they do love giving me whispering sand don't they I wonder if I can fit it. No, it doesn't look like I can. There's a few different ways to interact with all of this in the uh, in the game, but I definitely, I think one thing I really admire about this game is how. It's not just that it gives you sort of interesting mysteries to look at, um, but I like that it's something, at least to me, it's actually worth going back and listening to them. Like so, sometimes, you know, maybe I'll find something new. Sometimes it'll be, oh yeah, I forgot about that. Or sometimes it will be, oh, wait a minute. Now I know what I was supposed to do with X, Y, or Z. And that to me at least can be very rewarding. I suspect for some, it may be a bit frustrating. But then I suppose that's part of um, Weather Factory's charm, right? I, I know they do say that they make Marmite games, ones that provoke strong feelings one way or another. And I think 
especially because we're so lucky to have so many games uh, to play, right? I mean, we're, uh, this is being recorded at the time that there's a Steam summer sale going on right now. And certainly, even if you were on a very strict budget, there are lots of very, very, very good games uh, available, probably enough to keep you going for a year without getting bored uh, and without needing to make any further purchases. And so I don't really, for myself at least, I don't necessarily feel like competence is enough. I, I sort of feel that you need to be your own thing. And in this case here, obviously I really do enjoy these games and I enjoy sharing them with people. But I think this is a really good example of something that is not just a game that's worth your time, but it's actually one that really um, shoots up to the, the top of the must play chart for me. The Velvet, the glory is a question, and the moth always answers yes. The Velvet's answer is no, and that is always her answer. The Velvet is the hour that keeps secrets, and this painting has no more secrets to share. So finally, the Sister and Witch. We're now dipping into the um, the uh, elements of the soul that would be used at Crow Cross Sands, but honestly, Crow Cross hasn't been really giving me <laughs> what I need. Better now. Um, I think we'll do more and more around it. The sweet bones. On Thirstley's Ivories and Lovelies, Fiona Arishire recounts her visits in dreams to the Red Church in the Mansus and her conversations with the names of the Grail. An hour, Arishire explains, may usually only have seven names, but since Thirstley's Ivories and Lovelies, who usually comprise the Red Grail's names, are constantly attempting to devour one another in the names of other hours, that number fluctuates. Lovelies, the freshest of the Grail's names, usually adopt the characteristics of whatever they devour, be it an ivory, a thirstly, or occasionally an entirely different kind of name. A practical application of the principle is described. The arts of resurgences and emergences in the presence of sufficiently potent Grail aspect can be used to feed a pale mommet to its successor doll, creating something notably more avid. Now, we already have that recipe but we do know how to make a flushed momet if we didn't uh, after reading that book. On to the Locksmith Stream, Volume 3. The Sister and Witch. The Sister and Witch brings together what cannot be apart. She is sought beneath the moon at the water's edge. She is pearl, amber, coral. She cannot be touched. She cannot be separated. Abbot Geoffrey recorded a prophetic dream. Two women, one in violet, one in white, gathering seashells. The white-clad one, he wrote, handed him a shell and reminded him that one cannot keep what one cannot hold. So I suppose it's worth asking whether or not I want to continue investigating painting, seeing as we do have a room where I will use quite a few. I'm going to... Well, we do have the FET still. Okay, I think I will. And I know I'm going to need more water, so I might as well just get it over with here. I deserve a little quiet time. Love in a Quiet Place, one of Dr. Levinson's prefigures, a close and impossible copy of a painting made 20 years later by Kirshner, whose work Levinson often anticipated in his mirror dreams. I did not read that. 
I feel very foolish. running a little bit short on elements of the soul this would be a good time for me to consider uh, applying some of my skills towards the tree of wisdoms as I used to say in my youth the day is done and so am I but I've earned my pay okay so I'm not gonna earn any more money at the sweet bones so it doesn't really matter which one we restore it was autumn when the leaves rustle the silent landlady has served me apple pie with steamed cream in the window nook uh, contraband flotsam this will be interesting. Do I even have space for it? And the Loxmas Dream Trespasses. The third volume of Teresa Galmier's examination of parallels in the mystic dreams of artisans. In this volume, notoriously, Galmier's prose begins to disintegrate. It is not clear which dreams are in fact her own. The woman in the sand-colored robe has told me the stairways of the mansus go ever up, death is down. The mother of ants guards both directions with each of her heads, and so the passage must always be through a wound. I think the white door might be a wound. That's one reason the dead sometimes pass it. I think I have the other half of the secret now, and I hope my reader can put both halves together. Alright, let's take our health. Keep moving along, so House of Leaf. Levinson has signed the painting but added ELK. I forgot to go to Crow Cross Sands, my bad. This is overkill. I wouldn't normally want to use something like Inks of Power uh, or like a full level uh, Inks skill to uh, to commit to something like Crow Cross Sands, just because, you know, in theory I could use that to make an Encastum Terminale, but uh, I do... I still have never quite been able to figure out if the draws change based on... Oh dear. Um, I did, I've never quite been able to figure out if you get different results based on the skills and elements of the soul that you commit. My feeling is no, but this is the thing about randomness, right? It's... um. Unless you really sit down and ta like the best that you can really do is sit down, get a whole lot of results, and then make an estimation in terms of how likely it is that random chance produced those results. And if there's something to indicate, you know, you just kind of set your you set your uh, kind of your threshold, and um, if you happen to notice that the results are sort of skewed in a certain direction, that's maybe where you want to investigate a little bit further. But you know, obviously I'm going to get more enjoyment out of this game just engaging with it rather than, uh, you know, sitting down and uh, simulating a bunch of a bunch of uh, draws. All right. Damascene traditions of the no uh, sorry of the House of Leith. The House of Leith was an order of immortals who sought obscurity, rejecting their past and future. If the author of this short text is to be believed, the initiates of the Damascene branch were much more radical than their followers or uh, their fellows elsewhere. The house generally forbade any potentially procreative activities for fear of the terrible consequences of too long bearing a child. The Damascene order took this much further. At one point, male initiates were required to undergo castration and female initiates to strangle any children they had previously born. These measures were so horrific that the order was shaken by repeated schisms and eventually absorbed into the local sisterhood of the knot as a society of healers and exorcists. a little quiet time so we'll read another book 
don't think it's worth um, trying to restore another, so we'll just get some reading in here. Better now. And I guess the question is, do I want to focus on books or do I want to focus on paintings? I think we'll get another Levinson painting in today. I figure if I get through the paintings quickly, or the art quickly, because obviously I've been using some sculptures as well, um, but I figure those I can um, I can say, okay, well, well, we'll maybe hold off on some of the others until a later point. I know for a lot of these, uh, these are all repeats. But again, repetition isn't that bad in this game. You know, I probably should have restored another element of the soul as well. Repetition isn't bad because it does uh, potentially give you ideas that you wouldn't have had at the time. Um, I know I've said that repeatedly, but it is definitely worth repeating. Red Blue. It's a decent copy of a Picasso, painted 20 years before Picasso painted the original. Brian Levinson, up to his tricks again. Levinson has signed it, but added a question mark after his signature. frosted like a winter window. Darius Volume 1, an occasionally coherent catalog of secret gods organized by Hour. This is a reprint, but in the original Latin. This volume deals mostly with the Hours of the Wood, the Moth, the Black Flax, the Ring Yew, among others. The glory is a question, and the Moth always answers yes. So we're also good for a... Uh, we're good to keep the old moment. Again, I'm putting a lot of effort into keeping the old moment when, in truth, you know, I don't... I don't have any direct use for it right now, but... I still don't think it's a bad... It's better than putting all that effort into trying to... Uh, into trying to generate it again. So it's going to be a little bit different for today. This is one reason I was a bit more willing to focus on the painting. I'm going to need to open at least once uh, the Contraband Flotsam. And so that's going to use my, uh, my consider verb. And then, of course, we'll continue to investigate Crow Cross Sands and do the uh do the usual routine but we're definitely going to have a bit more time uh we're going to have uh, the consider verb occupied for a longer time than we normally normally would memories fade assistance departs but the soul is refreshed so definitely don't mind earning money for restoration beach combing in the morning In terms of little details, I, if I can, I never really set aside a task um, if I don't have it, but I always sort of feel it's nice to use Shaft to open up uh, just because of the knock side. And then we can read, you know what? We haven't used Caller's Desk in a while. We'll move on. We read Deiris, so we are now on to sh the shadow in the stair. I'm trying to remember, was it this stair? I think it was this.
actually can't remember the stair anymore. Oh, here we go. The stair to Nebris. I think this is the one. I'll carry the memory like a flambeau. Sorry, a memory like a flambeau safe through the mazes of night. And we will continue to do so. I'm sorry. I did say that I was going to show how to hire the... Um, the special figures as well, and I never did that. Uh, we may not be able to do that this episode, but I am going to try and make sure that I do that this week. The one drawback is, is it does take up a an element of the soul, so that's one reason I've uh, I sort of put it off. Um, but there's there's no like if I say I'm going to do something, I want to do it. It's just you know, sometimes if you have a priority that gets in the way, you don't want to do something that inconveniences you. But we'll we'll make sure that we do this uh, just for those those of you who are curious. What ship lost this a tall parcel, tightly wrapped in oilcloth. Okay, so we'll. Go ahead and open this up. Crack open the container. Delight in your discovery. The Shadow in the Stair. Ernestine Peterhands records her conversations with the little darkness in Hush House's Stair to Nebris, which she calls Donkerling. Ernestine's business in the cellars of Hush House often took her up and down the Stair to Nebris, although it is avoided by every other servant. Doggerling attempted first to consume her and then to demand sacrifices from her. Ernestine consented to bring it mice, but became very stern when asked for a new drowned child. Doggerling claims to be an imprisoned long under the protection of the deepest power of the sea. It is prone to occasional bouts of raving about how and when it has its freedom, its patron will drown the isle. Ernestine renders most of these long speeches as but is very interested in what it can tell her about the circumstances of shipwrecks. There are hints that she may have been planning a salvage expedition. So, the Stair Tenebris, there were shadows here in the earth long before the foundations of the house were laid. They retreated before the Romans' burrowings. They quailed before the sun hymns of the brethren. They slunk away before the blades and pistols of the barons to wolf. Over all those centuries they shrank until, at last, when the curia of the isle sunk this stair, they could recruit one as a watchdog. As I used to say in my youth, the day is done, and so am I, but I've earned my pay. So I'll get this metal back. It is autumn when the leaves rustle. The silent landlady has served me apple pie with st steamed cream in the window nook. And I will restore an element of the soul. I need to be reading another book. Sea strewn, salt snared stuff. Ambrosial. I like Ambrose Westcott. I have nothing in common with him, but <laughs> he's a very memorable character. And I know we're getting close to the end. I don't know if I'm going to be able to read another book in time, but let's at least see what the package contained.
Blackberry jam, plucked from hedgerows. Crack open the container, delight in your discovery. So not what I was hoping for, but hard to complain about jam. We can also use this as an opportunity to start looking at some more art. And I think we'll leave it there. So uh, again, we're sort of still uh, still carrying on. I'm, I'm not too upset with how this has worked. Um, what I'll do, so I can show I can show how the um, recruiting works, but I'll do that at the start of the next episode just for, um, you know, I, I figured the end is a little bit less likely for people to see, and I imagine that people will want to know about the special hires, so I will do that at the start. But yeah, I'm actually not too upset with how this is turning out for the, um, for the episode, so we're making decent enough time towards the end of a season. We're knocking down a bunch of uh, paintings, and then, of course, once we get the thing that we want from Crow Cross Sands, um, I can I can keep trying. I can just keep trying other things. Um, I can dedicate a little bit more time towards books. There's no reason why I only need to read one at a time. I can actually read vast swaths of the library, in as long as I have elements of the soul and desks to read them at. But I'm trying to pace it here just so I can kind of keep the the playthrough going. But again, all of that will be handled in the upcoming episodes. So as always, thank you very much for watching, and we'll see you in the next one.